Hello, football fans, and welcome to a Premier League whatever football edition of the Big D Podcast. Before I bring in today's special guest, please subscribe, like, and share the Spunky Spectrum Sports YouTube page with you don't know what to expect. Could be baseball, could be football, or in this case, it could be football. So uh, also check out the Big D Podcast on Spotify and Apple. So Joining us from the UK is uh, my friend in uh, soccer, not in soccer, as he calls it in the UK football, Charlie Mullen. Charlie, a uh, Premier League season up and running, and you know what that means. Absolutely, yes. Busy, busy, busy. Loads of games. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, this weekend, uh, the games are starting a little early, and uh, the biggest one of this weekend by fall is... Uh, a rematch of May Champions League final between Man City and Chelsea. So, uh, thinking of what ha- what happened the last time, the last couple of times these clubs met at the end of the 2020-2021 season, it fell off because for even going into all going into all three of those teams, I know City would be the better team. Yeah, you would have thought so, but. Um... Yeah, I think the last couple of weeks, City have just gone off the boil a little bit. I know that sounds crazy, um, considering some of the results they've put in, but um, nil-nil at home to Southampton on Saturday. That was a bit of a shock to a lot of people, but um, credit Southampton for hanging in there and getting a deserved point. So, um, yeah, I think this is a bit of a a tough one to call, really. Um, Obviously, you're a Chelsea fan. How do you see it going? I'm I'm wondering what the heck to expect because you think there'll be goals and it's one nil or two one. When you think it's gonna be nil nil, there are goals. I mean, this game, particularly when it's at the bridge, always seems to magnify, always seems to mystify I me. Mean, last year, I thought Chelsea. <clears throat> when I mean, I thought Chelsea would have steamrolled City and City won three nil. In this fix the last year, and I'm like, oh gosh. <laughs> this is a great way to start the new year. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 gonna be um interesting because as you all know, um I, you know, I've been doing a bit of work. Sorry, I've been doing a few stats, etc., for um gambling.com and bookmakers.co.uk here in the UK. And uh, one of the stats that I've uncovered is that um Chelsea have scored first in all five of their league games so far this season. And um, that's why they're joint top of the league. Um, Man City have got four clean sheets in their last four Premier League matches. So the smart money would be on both teams not to score this weekend. But there's so much talent that an attack for both these teams. Do you think that'll be the case, or do you think it'll be goals for both teams? I think if anything. If one t- I don't know. It's funny seeing that Man City not scoring because when, when I think of a Pep Guardiola Man City side, they always score goals, but yet a couple times this year, the Spurs game and Southampton, we've seen City come up short. I mean, I think if a team is more likely to score, Chelsea might be that team, but if you told me it's, either side scored like three or more goals, I'd probably say City. Yeah, yeah, and um, I think I'm right in saying that Chelsea have yet to concede a goal in the league from open play. Uh, the, the only goal they have conceded was a penalty to Liverpool. So um, defensively, Thomas Tuchel has done a tremendous job, job since taking over as Chelsea manager. Um, you know, he's sort of out of defence. They're not conceding goals. And they signed a young up-and-coming striker, Romelu Lukaku, who I think has got a bright future ahead of him. Uh, no, seriously, I mean, Lukaku is just... He seems to be that final piece in the Chelsea jigsaw. Uh, world-class goal scorer. His record for Belgium is phenomenal. Um, 70-odd goals, I think it is. And, yeah, I think last year, even though Chelsea did win the Champions League, you know, um, they were still missing that cutting edge up front. Timo Werner hasn't cut it for me. Um, Kai Havertz, I know he scored the winner in the Champions League, but he didn't have the best of seasons last year. He's coming into his own now. But uh, Romelu Lukaku, he's just class. And it'll be an interesting battle to see how Man City cope with him. Um, 
so that's something that I am really looking forward to. But um, it's, a, it's a cracking game and it's a great way to start the weekend's fixtures in the Premier League. Yeah, I mean, I think Lukaku got a poor, poor deal because of his first in England. I mean, he'd score goals everywhere, whether it be what West Brom, Everton, Man United. Why the Red Devils got rid of him beyond me, but he scored with Inter Milan, helped them win Serie A last year. They could use a few goals now, but can I can I just correct you there? I mean, you you were saying why did Man United let him go? Why did Chelsea let him go? <laughs> well. Well, because we got, I think we got, yeah, we we got a certain Didier Drogba and then Diego yeah. Costa. We get, we got too many Diegos. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I don't think Diego Costa. I think, I think it was, um, I think his first spell in the Premier League. I don't think he was quite ready for it. Um, I think I heard in an interview recently that leaving England was the best thing that could have happened to him. Um, he's developed. All his skills, he's matured as a player. He has bulked up into a formidable, powerful forward that nobody wants to defend against. So, um, yeah, I, I can see him scoring this weekend against Man City. Yeah, be honest. When I saw Lukaku, I mean, Lukaku play at the Euros, he looked so much different. He looked fitter, faster, and I mean, he's always been a big guy. But Lukaku looked like an NFL, looked like. Derek Henry amongst all the, amongst boys. Yes, he did. He did indeed. So no, that's that's again that I'm looking forward to. And if I was a betting man, I, well, I am because I work for Gambling.com. I would say both teams not to score would be a good bet, and possibly under two point five goals. Uh, when we talk about Chelsea's big money addition, uh. City's big money addition, Jack Grealish, will get the chance to play in a big game. Uh, do you, A, how well do you think Jack Grealish has played? And B, do you think Pep's getting the best of the form of Villa, man? Well, uh, we, we've had this chat before, um, you know, in the offseason, in the, in the summertime. Man City have just got so many quality players and um, signing Jack Grealish especially in attack, you know, I mean, Foden, he's coming back from injury, but when everybody's fit, who do you pick? And the ones who aren't playing aren't going to be satisfied sitting on the bench. So it's all very well having all these quality players in your squad, but you can't play them all. You can only play 11 players each game and you can only play, what, six, maybe five in attack every week. So somebody's going to be unhappy at missing out. And I think other teams like Chelsea, they've got a settled squad. Uh, Manchester United, settled squad, Liverpool's front three, you know what they are going to be every week. Well, actually, they've got four to choose from, um, although Firmino has gone off the boil a little bit, but Jota, Mane and Salah would be the three that would strike fear in any defence. So I think Man City's problem is what the best eleven is. I don't think they know that yet. I don't think Pep knows that. Um, it's going to take some time. Jack Grealish is a class player. He's a very, very good player. Um, and I think it might take him a bit of time to settle into the way that Man City play. Being a £100 million signing in the UK, I mean, and that's a massive deal. Um, I know you get contracts like that bandied around every week in American sports, but a £100 million transfer fee. For someone as young as Jack Grealish is, it's a lot to have on your shoulders. Is Pep getting the best out of him? Probably not, but he will eventually. As soon as he knows what his best 11 is, then I think we'll see the best of Jack Grealish, assuming he will be in that starting 11. Uh, I think he will be. I think Grealish and Sterling would be the two that I would start with up front for Man City. I don't think Gabriel Jesus has, um, has done a good job during his time at Man City. So that would be the two that I would start with. And then you've got Foden behind him and the rest of the players that Pep Guardiola, Pep Guardiola has to choose from. It's a tough job, but that's why he gets paid the, the big bucks. Yeah, the big question with Man City fans, fans is whether City would have been better off signing Spurs and England striker Harry Kane because, as we've seen, couple times with City, not just this year, but the end of last year in the FA Cup semi-final and the Champions League final. City lack goals. 
Yes, they do. And I don't know why they didn't break the bank to try and get <clears throat> Harry Kane again. Just like uh, Lukaku is with Chelsea, I think Harry Kane would have been the um, final piece in the Man City jigsaw. But that's not to be. Um, and they were also interested in signing Cristiano Ronaldo. Whether that was true, anything in that, who knows? But it certainly spurred Manchester United to sign him. And, well, he's hit the ground running, hasn't he, on his um, return to Old Trafford. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, I think sometimes Pep Guardiola can be a little bit too arrogant for his own good you know we've seen over the last few years that he's played teams with no strikers and to be fair they have won those games but for the big games like this you do need a out and out goal scorer um, someone like Lukaku or Harry Kane who will score the crucial goals Raheem Sterling has scored a great you know he's got a great goal scoring record but for Man City in the last year or so he has he's been more missed than hit for England, he's been hit, hit, hit after you know every game. But for Man City, it seems to have gone off the boil for him a little bit. But this might be the game where he rediscovers his scoring form. But we'll see. Yeah, I mean, in a weird, in the last three games against Chelsea, City scored one goal. Mm -hmm. One goal. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, go ahead, go ahead. Well, certainly Thomas Tuchel has done his homework. Um, I really like Thomas Tuchel. I think he's been a breath of fresh air coming to the Premier League. I like the way that um, he sets his team up. I like the way that he deals with the media before and after matches. And um, yeah, I think, you know, you, you win your Champions League in your first half season at the club. The future is only going to get better and better. And, you know, people can't see past Chelsea to win the league this year. In this country, I don't know what it's like in America with yourself, Dylan, but um, certainly Chelsea are there to be, um, they're going to be one of the, the main teams come the end of the season. They're going to be battling for the, the Premier League title. If you finish above Chelsea, there's a good chance that you've won the Premier League. Yeah, when I think of Thomas Soka, I think of honesty, I think of tactician, I think somebody who doesn't matter what he, I mean, look at what he did second half against Spurs on Sunday. He took off Mason Mount and everybody was wondering, what are you doing? And in goal Conte scoring goals. I mean, yeah. look at Chelsea's three goal scores in the London Derby against Spurs. Thiago Silva and goal Conte and Tony Rudiger. Just how everybody predicted. Yeah, yeah. And you talk about honesty. Um, there was an interview recently. I think it was, before, it was after Lukaku made his debut. And obviously he scored on his debut. And um, the interviewer asked him, um, was Lukaku always going to start? And Thomas Tuchel said, yeah, without a doubt. And the interviewer tried to be clever and he goes, so what you said on Friday in the pre-match press conference was rubbish then because you said you didn't know at that stage. And he goes, Thomas Tuchel replied brilliantly. He goes, well, I'm not going to tell you whether he's playing or not. That would just be stupid, wouldn't it? So I like the way that he deals with the media. I'm not saying he's up there with Sir Alex Ferguson with mind games, but um, there's certainly a lot more to come from Thomas Tuchel. And um, yeah, I like what he's done so far. I mean, you win a Champions League, make an FA Cup final, and uh, I don't know what we say, leading the Premier League or like co-leading in golf terminology with Liverpool and Man United. Five games through the uh, Premier League season. Yeah. <clears throat> there's um there's still 33 games left in the Premier League, so it promises, you know, we've said this many, many times over the last few seasons, it promises to be a great title race if everybody can stay fit and healthy, um, all the key players. We saw what happened with Liverpool with Virgil van Dijk last year. Uh, they they didn't they weren't able to compete. So if everybody can stay fit. Certainly, um, I would consider Liverpool, Chelsea and Man City as the three teams to battle it out for the Premier League title. And wouldn't it be great if it went down to the final weekend of the Premier League season? Yeah, you imagine that and then have like an FA Cup final the week after that and then a Champions League final in St. Petersburg the week after that. Yes, yes. Somebody going for like somebody going for a triple, it'd be like 1999 all over again. Exactly, yes. Only this time, it may not be just be United going for the triple, but triple, but somebody else. Exactly, exactly. Well, the quadruple, Man City were on for that last year, but they didn't quite get over the, the line, thanks to um, your team in particular. 
Um, so I think four trophies is a massive, massive achievement. And I don't know if it can be done. I honestly don't think it can be done. So uh, how do you, back to the uh, Chelsea City game, how do you expect both teams to line up starting with uh, City? Well, that's what I've been saying. Um, who knows? You could ask 50 different people and you'd get 50 different lineups. Um, defensively, they're, they're pretty solid. You know who's going to start in defence. It's the midfield and attack that you could pick any five, six, seven players from six players from that. And um, I don't know. I don't know. I would I, personally, I would start with Sterling and Jack Grealish and take it from there, certainly up front. And whether Phil Foden is fit enough to start, I know he's been playing. He played the last Champions League game. He might have played last weekend. I can't remember in the league. <clears throat> I didn't see much of the highlights of that game. But um, if he's fit, then, you know, give him a run. People were clambering for Foden and Grealish to play for England during the Euros, but Gareth Southgate was reluctant to do so. Um, so whether Pep Guardiola feels this is the time to do it, Certainly, if you had, if you're a Chelsea defender and you had Jack Grealish on one side running at you, and you had Phil Foning running at you the other side, it's a frightening, frightening thought, really. But um, Chelsea certainly have the defence to um, to counter that. So, how Man City are going to line up remains a mystery. Remains a mystery. But um, we, we we seem to forget that Phil Foden is, you know. A Man City player because of the injuries um, since the European Championships in the summertime. But once he gets back up to full speed, Man City should be flying on all cylinders. How do you see Man City lining up? I actually would be a little surprised if Kevin De Bruyne starts the game. I know you would think I'm crazy because he played 90 in the League Cup, Carvel Cup. Why can't they just call it the League Cup tie anymore? Yeah, people do. It's just the sponsors that you have to mention if you yeah. are that way inclined, but it's a league cup. Yeah, yeah. I would actually be surprised if Kevin De Bruyne started because he's come back from the from numerous injuries. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure he's I mean, yeah, he played 90 on Tuesday, but it's an early kickoff. And mm -hmm. Man City's rode the next 10 days or so might be the hardest I've seen all year or in a couple of years with a PhD in Liverpool away. away. So I, I don't think Pep will risk De Bruyne from start. Do I think De Bruyne plays the last 20 minutes? Yeah. I think De Bruyne is an option for the last 20 minutes, but I don't think City can really afford to play him because what if De Bruyne – Played and got him and hurt himself like he did in two of the last three city city Chelsea games because you think of the FA Cup semi final, yeah, and the Champions League final. Guess what? De Bruyne left the pitch in tears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to see him up against uh, Rudiger, wasn't it? Who? Uh, uh, yeah, Rudiger sent him into a, a Rudiger sent him into concussionville, whatever you want to call. It. Yeah. Unfortunately, I mean, I love watching De Bruyne play, but I'm not sure if he can play back-to-back 90-minute -back matches without much of any of the preseason. No, the ideal scenario for Pep Guardiola would be to have him on the bench just in case he's needed for the last 25 minutes, 30 minutes. But if Man City are winning 2-0, 3-0, which I don't think they will be, but you never know, um, then he, he won't need to call on him. And, um, you know, he can be... <clears throat> pardon me, he can be... Um, preserved for the Champions League game next week, which uh, I know we're going to be speaking about very shortly. So, yeah, I don't think there's any need to rush Kevin De Bruyne back. And then uh, how do you think Chelsea will play? I mean, do you think that Astro Equator is the right centre back or is he more that right wing back we saw against Spurs on Sunday? Um, yeah, I that's an interesting one. He did well, didn't he, uh, at fullback? So certainly, the I'd be inclined to say the team that started the second half um, against Spurs would be my starting one. But that means that Mason Mount wouldn't start, and I don't think he's done anything to merit being dropped. Um, so yeah, that's another tricky decision. Team selection. 
uh, for Thomas Tuchel, but um, he knows what he's doing. Um, who would you like to see start the game for Chelsea? Uh, I, I mean, I'd love to see Reece James because I think from from a speed perspective, speed and crossing perspective, Reece James gives something that the city won't have with Kyle Walker because, yeah, Kyle Walker can run for days, but he's not really a cross and right back or right wing back. Reece James can not only run, but he can cross the ball. And if Tom Sucker plays with plays like I think he will, Marco Salams or the left wing back, I think having Reece James, his pace and cross ability can pin Man City back and make the pitch extra wide. Because what Chelsea may have an advantage is the cross ability with Alonso on one side and Reece James on the other. Yep. You, you mentioned Marcus Alonso playing right fullback. Or left fullback. Really? Yeah. Really? He's going to spend more time in the Manchester City box than he is in the Chelsea box, isn't he? <laughs> that's why I said left wing back. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, I love the way he plays. He's got so much energy. And, um, yeah, he, every time... You, um, you you see Chelsea on the attack. He's in the uh, opposition box, and I don't know where he gets the energy from. But yeah, certainly I would be looking at him to have a few shots on target this weekend. If if I was, um, yeah, well, I will be looking for odds for players to have shots on target. Uh, Marcus Alonso will certainly be on top of my list um, as a defender. You don't expect defenders to have many shots on target. Um, but yeah, that would be one for me. Uh, one thing I will, one thing I will bet Kai have is to start in the game. Let's see the last two games against City. Who scored the only goal in both games? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Good call, good call. But I'm gonna go with Lukaku to score. Yeah, you might not. Yeah, Lukaku scoring against Man City. Of course, they'll be familiar from all those Manchester derbies. That thinking. Instead of red against blue, it'll be dark blue against whatever blue cities were. And hopefully it's the regular trim and not some funky pink or yellow trim. Yeah, well, you're the home team, so you'll be wearing your blue. It'll, it'll be Man City who probably have to wear their black kit or whatever, pink and an orange, whatever it was a couple of seasons ago. Oh, um, actually, Man City, actually, the colors are such where... Man City and Chelsea can both wear regular kits. If you remember the Champions League final, they both, Man City and Chelsea, mm-hmm. both wore their regular kits. So uh, there might not be a problem like you would see if, like, Leicester and Everton played each other. True, true. Good point. Good point. So uh, what do you think? You What do you think? Would a nil I mean... You've, so uh, with uh, all these uh, defenders and everything, you're expecting, what, a no-no game on this weekend? Well, that's what the stats are suggesting. And, um, you know, if anybody does take a lead, um, can you see them pushing forward to perhaps score a second and leave themselves vulnerable at the back? No, I can't either. That's why I'm going for, you know, both teams not to score or under 2.5 goals. Um, I don't think it'll be a very open game. I think it'll be very cagey because of um, what's at stake, certainly from Man City's point of view. Um, you know, dropping points at home to Southampton. Uh, no disrespect to Southampton. Um, that was, That's a game that Man City should have won. They, they know that. So... You don't want to be losing too many points early in the season. Yes, I know they did that last season and they went on that incredible run, Man City, from December until May or something like that, or March, sorry, March, when they won 15 games in a row to um, win the title. You don't want to be doing that this year with Man's, uh, with Chelsea as strong as they are and Liverpool back to full fitness now as well. So um, you don't want to be losing too many points early in the season like this. So I think I'll be cagey from both teams. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there are a few yellow cards. I mean, nothing surprised me in this game. It might even be red, but I don't. I don't expect many goals either. I think it. I think it could be nil nil, one nil, one one. I'd be surprised if it's more than two goals either. I think it'll be. Uh, it could be one of those. 
beautiful, ugly, one of those ugly games that just annoys people. It could be like one of those Manchester Dolby's which and nil nil and just annoy the crap out of you. <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, I think I think it'll still be a good game if there aren't any goals. Um, you know, we've got two very good goalkeepers, don't forget, and two very good defenses. So I think we'll see a lot of slick passing, nice counter-attacking football, but, you know, defences might come out on top. Um, I've been wrong before, and I'll be wrong again. Um, we shall see if I'm wrong in uh, in this regard, but um, I think it'll still be a good game. Yeah, be, yeah sometimes, you know, the games can be pretty. Yeah, absolutely. Be beautiful, absolutely. And, just, and just that both teams are defending well and the other team's goalies playing well. I mean... Last year's Champions League final seemed pretty to me, and it's funny because I think both goalies only made one save in the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it was. It was a good final. I enjoyed the final as a neutral. So, yeah, more of that, please. But, yeah. um, no, the, the, both teams as well, obviously, we've mentioned before, have massive Champions League games coming up. Um, both got off to winning starts last weekend, so it's not as if they have to rest players with a massive game in Europe coming up. So there'll be no resting of players um, from my point of view. Um, it'll be the strongest 11 players from both from both camps starting this game. Wait a minute. You said resting players. I thought you were saying Champions League games in midweek. I mean, I can't think of a, bis of a, bigger, man a bigger Champions League game than Lionel Messi against Pep Guardiola. Yeah. It is a massive game, but both teams are going to qualify from that group. Let's not kid ourselves. Um, they'll probably take a draw in both games against each other, PSG and Man City, and see who finishes top based on the other games they have to play. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one too. Um, money bags against money bags. Um, yeah. But it, that would be Kachal against Abu Dhabi, right? <laughs> yes, it would. It would indeed. And look, <clears throat> Man City, they might not have been in this competition had it not been for their lawyers, etc. So, um, yeah, it's an interesting fixture, isn't it? And listen, PSG have to, have to, underline that several times, they have to win the Champions League this year. If they don't do it, it's a, it's a failed season. It doesn't matter if they win the league in France and they win the, the, the French Cup. If they don't win the Champions League this year with the squad they have assembled right now with Lionel Messi joining, etc., and Mbappe and Neymar. Um, Neymar and everybody else that they have there. Um, um, Sergio Ramos, Mr. Ramos. Angle Di Maria. Angle Di Maria. Um, you know, God, there, there's so many players. Hakimi. Yeah, exactly. You know, if they don't win it this year, Pochettino should be sacked. He should be sacked because that's the only thing they have to win this year. It doesn't matter if they don't win the French League. They didn't win the French League last year. Nobody bat an eyelid. Champions League is one trophy they have never won. And if they don't win it this year with the players they have, the squad they have, then it's time for Pochettino to be sacked. But well, hey, you look at a PSG sack Thomas Tocco and look what happened. He won the Champions League with Chelsea last year. Exactly, exactly. And just then with PSG, they're seven points clear at the top of League 1 right now. I know, I think it's Marseille are second. They've got a game in hand uh, because of their shenanigans with uh, Nice in their game earlier in the season. Which oh, don't remind, me of, don't remind me of all the uh, pitch and fade I mean, uh, yeah. I remember <clears> England having that of few times but that's the way for another day yeah so put it this way um psg could probably play their second team and win the french title it's a champions league that they have to win this year could you say the same thing about man city because cities won everything in england but the european cup uh yeah but the if, if Man City had have signed Harry Kane, then they probably would have been favourites to win the Champions League. They haven't got that striker, so I don't see them as being favourites to win the Champions League. Um, not so much as PSG with the talent they have. 
Um, I know they haven't they haven't won the the Champions League, but I think Man City fans are pretty patient about that, and it'll come. They feel it will come, whether it's this year or maybe next year or whatever, when they sign a top top quality forward, then they'll be prepared to wait. But the the need for PSG and their owners, let's not forget, um, they they've openly said that they want to win the Champions League. They got to the final a couple of years ago against Bayern Munich. Didn't work out for them. So, yeah, this they're putting all their eggs in one basket to win the Champions League. And that's why they signed Lionel Messi. How many sides could realistically win the Champions League this year? I mean, you obviously think Man City, PSG, probably Chelsea. Yeah. I mean, how many others do you think could win it? <laughs> Liverpool, if they stay fit and healthy. Um, you know, they've got four forwards who are chomping at the bit to play every week and are good enough to play every week. Um, defensively, if they can keep everybody fit, Virgil van Dijk, obviously, they, they could get a good run on it. You need a bit of luck to win certain trophies and whoever does win it will have a bit of luck this year uh, with the teams that they face. So Liverpool, I would put Liverpool in there. Bayern Munich, obviously, as well, um, you know, this squad is edging. I understand that. Thomas Muller and Robert Lewandowski, which could be his last season at Bayern Munich. Who knows? You know, um, a bit like um, Aaron Rodgers at Green Bay. You know, this is going to be his last season. He wants to win the Super Bowl. For Robert Lewandowski, it would be nice if he won the, the Champions League again. OK, it was only a couple of years ago when he last won it. But, you know, it would be a nice way to buy out of Germany for him. Yeah, it was. I mean, to be honest, we, we were all robbed of seeing Bayern Munich and Manchester City play last year. I mean, that would have been the final everybody would have wanted to see. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, Lewandowski's knee meant he couldn't play in either, games, in either game against PSG. That's right. And I'm not sure about the Italian teams, if they're ready to no, mount no. a challenge for the Champions League. Uh, maybe enter if they'd kept Lukaku, but of course they don't. I know they've got off to a great start in Serie A, but Champions League? Mm, don't think so. Don't think oh, so. by the way, by the way, speaking of Italy, Juve. Mm. Did, uh, Juve not started well at all. Have you seen how bad the old ladies fared? Yes, yes, I have. And I watched the game last night against Spezia. Spezia, I should say. And they were lucky to win that. They really were lucky to win that. They were losing 2-1. Um Chiesa got them back into it with the equaliser and they, they scored late on. Um, if it hadn't been for that, I mean, they're still 13th in the league. So I thought with Allegri coming back, he would sort things out, but that hasn't been the case. And I think, I know we spoke about um, Italy during the European Championships and what a great defence they had with Cialini and Bonucci. But um, I know Cialini hasn't played much for Juventus this season. Um, Bonucci looked very slow last night. Um, he was to blame for the second goal, possibly, you could say. Um, so, yeah, they're going to have to invest in two quality centre-halves in the coming seasons. Otherwise, but, they're not well, going to win anything. But the lick was supposed to be the up-and-coming young centre-back of the future. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't see that. Do you? He did score the winner last night, the lick. He's not a professional goal scorer. He's not out no, of sun. He's not out of sun scoring goals. No, <laughs> but if you've got a defender who can score goals like Alonso, you're doing all right. Oh, Antonio Rudiger. Uh, Rudiger, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and and of course, I'm bringing up Juve because Chelsea will be in uh, Turin this week. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, I re- and, and trust me, I remember the last trip to Turin and it didn't go well. I think that was, uh, the, I think that would have been 2012 because that was the year. Then we ended up being relegated to the Europa League and beating and winning that one. I think Ivanovic scored the stoppage time winner in that Europa League final eight years mm-hmm. ago. Yeah, I think you're better prepared this year to um, go to yeah. Turin and win. So I don't think you have anything to worry about there. And obviously, if you do win, get six points from six, uh, and you get qualification to the round of 16 secured quicker than, you know, sooner rather than later, 
then that's a great position because you can rest players for the last two games, last game or whatever, and concentrate on the league and hopefully build a bit of a lead before the Champions League resumes after Christmas. I like I like that man, Paul. Yeah, I bet you do. Yeah, so thanks off and on, Charlie, and uh, can't wait to see these games this week, this weekend, and uh, next weekend. Uh, which your best one, and hopefully your uh, Dolphins can get on the get back on the winning side. Nah, they're not against the Raiders. <laughs> no, they're not. They're not. All we want is a reliable quarterback to play well week after week. We can't even have a reliable quarterback who will play week after week. But yeah, I still have hope in that helmet. Yeah, yeah. If you can get a quarterback somewhat better than two of maybe, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not sold on two. Unfortunately, two is always sorry. He's like damaged goods. Yes, he is. We had Dan Marino for so many years. He never missed a game, and now you've got Tua. Um, yeah, it doesn't bode well for the future, but we'll see. Yeah, we will. Thanks for hopping on. One last thing. What? Go Europe. Oh, do not. Oh, now you're trash talking with the Ryder Cup. Okay, okay. What do you think? What do you think Shane Lowe is going to be? Bryson DeChambeau and uh, Colin Morcow at... Uh, Bryson DeChambeau will beat himself. <laughs> yeah, he very well maybe He might hit um, three in the water. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, we, we've, we've got the experience. There are two wild cards, right? Sergio Garcia, Ian Poulter. I know there was three, but um, Sergio Garcia and Ian Poulter have played more games between them in the Ryder Cup than your whole American team. Six rookies you have. Ah, uh, rookie. I don't care. Ah, uh, rookies. I don't care about rookies. We'll, all golfers are more. All golfers are better. Are more ready for what this course is. Well, you've got the home support as well. I mean, you're not allowing any British fans or European fans in, <laughs> right? So, I mean, that's I hope, the, I hope. actually, we all opening the border, opening the border, like them to like fully vaccinating people, but, but, but that's a totally different issue. <laughs> I know, thinking. I know, I know there will be a few European supporters who live in America supporting the the European team. So, just hopefully. Saying. Hopefully they can shout Brooksy a few times at uh, Bryson DeChambeau and uh, throw him off his game. I'm just saying that I'm just saying I want to see Bryson and Brooks together because it would be the most memorable pairing we've ever seen at a Ryder Cup. The, yeah, it would either it would go one or two ways. It would either they would either go four zero or suck, and America would get blown out like the year that Phil and Tiger were paired together. Yeah, yeah, I think it'll be the uh, the latter of those two scenarios. And um, yeah, hopefully, you know, your two hotels, you know, your hotel Brooksy and your hotel Bryson can, you know, meet for breakfast at the right time and things like that. I mean, it's, yeah, it promises to be a spectacle. It promises to be a spectacle one way or the other. Yeah, and back to having ride, back to having Ryder Cups after all the, after all the uh, major sh- drama this year is it feels like a normal year of sports with the Euros, the Olympics, and now the Ryder Cup. What next? I know, I know. And you know what? We might give America a five point lead going into the final days of singles. Oh god. Maybe, maybe six, maybe six. Who knows? You know. Oh god, you're not gonna bring up 2012. Yeah. 12 again from uh Medina. Yeah, from Medina. Medina. I'm trying to think of something that rhymes with whistling straights. Miracle, Medina, something at Whistling Straits. Leave it with me. I'll come up with something. Hey, hey, the, hey, the only miracle, the only Ryder Cup miracle I remember is when the next US Open will be at, at, uh, in 99, when the US came back from, what, three or four points back against Europe in 99, and uh, we won with uh, Justin Leonard punting from the, uh, the parking lot. Oh, was that, was that Brookline, was it, when you were? 99. Over- you were dancing up and down on um, players' <laughs> lies, you know, for the putts. Yeah. I will admit, I will admit that that should have been about five 15 yard penalties. Old Dava should have put in from like five feet, but I was, but I was seven when that Ryder Cup took place and didn't even know golf. 
And you should have been penalized for the shirts that you were wearing as well. They were horrendous at Brooklyn. Hey, hey, you know what? Hey, you know what? It doesn't matter how you dress. You, if you win, you can be you could run around in a bathing suit and nobody that, that's true. That's true. <laughs> and it's a it's, it's a good note to say. Um Payne Stewart will always be one of my favorite golfers. Sadly taken too young, but yeah, he always rest. wore he always dressed in NFL clubs colors, didn't he? Yeah, rest in peace, Payne yeah. Stewart. Wore those uh wore that Ben Hogan style outfit with the hat, the yeah. pants the puff, and the, the high puff. stocks. Remember Payne's yeah. Paul Putt at 99. And then the funny thing was afterward he said to Phil Mickelson, you want to be a father. Because Phil's wife Amy was suspecting Cancer. their first oh, yeah. child. Yeah. Literally, the literally she could have gone into labor at any point. And Payne Payne said to Phil, You want to be a father. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Turns out, I mean, it's not always what happens when you win, but uh, when you lose win, but what happens when you lose. And I think, and I think it showed what class there was between both guys yes yes without a doubt without a doubt yeah unfortunately pain taken way too soon way agree. too agree <laughs> all right <sighs> thanks for hopping on charlie and i will see you around no problem enjoy your weekend of sport